I'm not going to forget it. This is going to go to my staff whose job it is to take that information, make sure that as I'm being briefed and we're talking about issues, it gets included. So I just want to make sure that you understand that I am listening, I am trying to understand, but I only have so much time in the day. The second thing that I think is really clear, that, that I want to make really clear, is that I like to share information with everyone. And I do it in multiple ways, whether it's interviews, whether it's appearing at forums, uh, I tweet things. But one thing you will never hear me do, or never see me do, is engage in Twitter wars. I think that's silly. If you got something to say, send me an email. If you got something to say, bring it forward. But when people get on Twitter and start telling me chats are you need to, I don't even look at that, quite frankly. Because that's not the forum for that. Uh, I am probably the most available educator you will ever find. Let's use our time effectively in that way. Now, is that so? The high school issue, believe me, it is not only on the radar, it is being factored in to some of the organizational structural changes that are going to be rolled out in the not too, uh, in the very near future. So, thank you. The second thing, you want to talk about issues of uh, social justice? I am about ready to pull the plug on all SAT and PSATs. And the reason I'm ready to do that is that the National Merit Foundation, which, which partners with College Board, is insisting on asking students at the registration for their, for their citizenship status. Now think about the cooling effect that will have. Talk about social justice. And this is part of education for over a year. And I'm gonna ask, do not tweet this, do not send this out because I have a meeting and a phone call later today to try to resolve it. If we don't resolve it, then I'm going to war. That will have a chilling effect. <laughs> and what you need to know is that I have now activated the 70 largest urban school districts in America. My colleagues, the superintendents in all of those schools, are waiting for me to let them know what the conversation happens later today. And if it does not get resolved, we are all going to now pull out of giving the SAT and the, the PSAT because that is a matter of social justice. Yeah. So while I understand testing sites are important, I would disagree that's not social justice. How we take that test and what information that's provided is a matter of social justice. So I just want to set the cup where my social justice meter is, and I will let you know, please, I'm having this conversation with you today. I even thought uh, maybe I can even say I'm going to trust that stays amongst us uh, until I have an opportunity to actually put them on the spot. So I hear you, and I, I want to make sure that we give all of our students across the city an opportunity to do what they need to do. Now, the issue of specialized schools, but I like data. I have asked repeatedly since I got here we are a public school system. We are not a system of private schools. We are not a system of exclusionary schools. We are a public school system. So show me the data. Show me where it is quantified that a single test admissions policy to any specialized program or school, especially in a public school system, is the most effective way of determining student talent, which is code for students having the ability to be successful in that specialized program. I asked it in every forum, I asked it to every critic, I asked it to every single educator. I have yet to have anyone show me where there is quantifiable data that proves that that's okay. I will give you another fact, and I want to thank Lonnie for giving me this fact. There are 165 specialized schools across the country. And of those 165 specialized schools, there are only eight that require a single test for admission to the specialized school. And those eight schools are in New York City. So either the rest of the country's got it all wrong, or we are still using a relic of the past. In addition, in addition, there is no verifiable or quantifiable data that proves the reliability or validity of the current specialized high school admissions test to actually measure capacity to do well in that school. It's an obstacle. It's a hoop you have to ju jump through. And while there are people, and I respect the argument, that say this is a meritocracy, that test is an objective measure, it's not an objective measure when you have people living in poverty spending thousands of dollars for test prep for one test. <laughs> Oh, 
I'll go even further. If right now all of us, very learned, advanced, passionate people, decide we're going to find Harvard, Yale, Prince, Princeton, UCLA, in fact, almost any university, especially the elite university in Ivy League, not one of us would have to take a single test for admission. We have multiple factors that would be considered. So maybe they've got it right, we've got it wrong. But let's look at more data. In a city as diverse as New York City, a city of immigrants, when 10, not 10%, 10 African American students this year will gain admissions to a specialized school, then maybe it's black kids and brown kids just can't be successful academically. Mm -hmm. Because if that's not the case, then maybe the system we're using to sort kids is not the most effective, it's not the most enlightened, it's not the most egalitarian. So I am willing to take any arrows. District 15 last night, we had some very passionate people. I appreciate that passionate speech. But I'm not going to mince my words when I say to folks that we are a public school system. And while we're not saying just because you're black or just because you're brown, you have to go to a specialized school, what I am saying is that any student, whether you're black, brown, or any other ethnicity, should have an equitable opportunity to go to a school if, number one, you're qualified, if, number two, you want to go. Because believe it or not, I've spoken to parents and students who have been admitted, who have passed that obstacle, and have said, I do not want to go there. And there are graduates of some of the specialized schools who are now writing op-eds and describing what their experiences are in some of these specialized schools. And what is being said to them in the halls of a specialized school? How can I, as a chancellor, allow that to exist? I can't. I can't. They do well, and we take that as a composite, and we say, across the board, across the board, the top 3%, because you've done what we told you to do, and you've done well in school, you have an opportunity now to go to one of these schools if you want to go to one of these schools. Many of them are going to say no. I don't see what's wrong with that. It's going to lift all boats. It's going to yeah. I'll talk about the, the opportunity for all students. And consider this final point. 50% of the seats in specialized schools, as we speak, come from 21 middle schools. 50%. When you think about the portfolio of middle schools in our city, almost 600 middle schools, what that means is that parents have an ideation that I must go to one of these middle schools because that's what's happening to a specialized school, and I don't know what happened to that specialized school, and by the way, I'm going to do it out because I have to get test prep to be able to pass this ridiculous test that has nothing to do with anything except the not we have limited in the minds of our public that you only go to certain schools because that's where you will find the pathway to a better education. We know that is malarkey. I know that's malarkey. I've visited almost 80 schools already in this great city, and I've seen some incredible schools that are probably on nobody's list. So if anything comes, whether intended or unintended, from this change in how we identify student talent, in our system, by the way, I'm going to keep reminding us, a public school system. And it gets people to look beyond the very narrow, mi microscopic 21 schools that I have to go to, and they take a look, and they actually visit their neighborhood school, and they engage with us in helping us with the things we're already doing to improve schools. And I think that will be an incredibly important time period for our district. I do. I know it will be. So I invite you to be part of those conversations, but what I'm going to ask us to do is let's look at the data. Let's look at the data. What does the data tell us? And then let's focus on the data. And I think what you're going to start seeing now, just like we have a very, very well-spoken alumni of one of these specialized schools who have said, yes, what about you? You're going to start seeing many people that are coming to that 